Every time I do this, I'm always reminded of the first time I went out to make a speech after losing my sight. It's one of those experiences that kind of keeps us all humble. We had just started the television network, and it grew very, very quickly. And as often happens, people know enough to build a business, but once they get there, they start listening to other people's opinion. And I thought, well, I got to get out to California and hire some television people to tell me how to promote this network. So I made the mistake of going out there and hiring a couple of guys from the left coast with ponytails to come to Oklahoma, where I live, which, as you know, is the cultural center of the universe. And you guys ought to know that better than anybody. But I hired these guys, paid them way too much money to come and help me promote this network that we were good enough to build, but we didn't think we knew how to promote somehow. And they came to me and they said, Jim, you have over a thousand television stations. You've got to get out and schmooze all of these people. Well, I told them, I'm not even sure that's legal in Oklahoma to go and run around schmoozing people. And I was just a little ways out of that nine by 12 foot room I told you about. I could kind of stumble out of my house and fall into the back of the limo and ride to the office and stumble around there all day and reverse the process in the evening. But the thought of getting on an airplane and going to a thousand different towns and cities and meeting with all these station managers, that seemed impossible. I wasn't going to do that. So I told my friends from the left coast there, you guys are getting overpaid. Come up with another plan. Well, a few days later, they came back down the hall to my office, and they said, Jim, since you were an Olympic athlete and you just won an Emmy Award and you have some, some things going for you here, we are going to book you into arenas and convention centers as a speaker, a motivational speaker, and then we're going to invite our station managers in on kind of a regional basis, and that way we can kill two birds with one stone. I never was quite sure why these guys from California, they like to kill birds with stones, but when you run across them, in fact, the more birds you can kill with the fewer stones, the better they like it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's when I ask the question that gets us all in trouble here in the new millennium. I said, when would I have to start? Well, they said, Jim, they booked these big arena events at least six months in advance, so you wouldn't have to do anything for at least six months. Well, I don't know what I'm doing today after this program. So when someone says, will you do something in six months, I'll agree to anything. In fact, if you guys are getting up a group to like uh, swim the English Channel or climb Mount Everest or something in the spring, I'm sure I'd be delighted to go with you. I'll agree to anything six months from now. So I said, fine, you guys get out of here, leave me alone. What seemed like a few days, certainly no more than a few weeks later, they came back down the hall and they said, Jim, it's time to go. Kind of sounded like one of those death row movies, you know? <laughs> and I said, go where? And they said, it's time to make one of those speeches you promised us you'd make. And I said, you clowns promised me I had six months. They said, trust us, it's been a full six months. <laughs> you see, they always lie to the blind guy. <laughs> and they think they get away with it. And in reality, I guess they do. I just like to let them know that I know they get away with it. I said, okay, where are we going? They said, Jim, we have booked you into the Anaheim Coliseum where you will be the motivational speaker for 14,000 state government workers. Now, if any of you here have ever worked for the state government <laughs> or know anybody that works for the state government or even discovered anyone doing any work for the state government, <laughs> You'll please excuse my next comments, but I thought being a motivational speaker for the state government workers was something like raising the dead. <laughs> Not unheard of, but it doesn't happen every day if you know what I mean. Well, our vice president, Kathy Harper, and I got on a plane and we're finally get out to California. We're backstage in this huge arena and I'm scared to death because I haven't made a speech since I've lost my sight. And I was trying to remember, was it 12 steps or 13 to the front of that stage? Because that can be kind of critical at a certain point in time, you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially for you folks right there. 
And I was trying to remember, where did they put all those potted palm trees? In fact, you guys are from all across the country. You travel a lot and meet a lot of people. If you ever run into the man or woman, whoever it was, that decided they should go into arenas, convention centers, television studios, right where a blind guy might be working, and decided they should go in there and put potted palm trees all over the place, if you ever run into that person, would you tell them I'd like to visit with them? Because over the last few years, I've had kind of a close personal relationship with some of those potted palm trees. Well, we're standing back there, and I'm trying to remember where everything was, and I'm really nervous. And when you're blind, you, you pay close attention. You kind of sense things. And I could just tell, I could sense that someone had come up, and they were standing right next to me. Have you ever had anybody kind of standing in your space, you know, a little too close for comfort? Well, somebody was standing right there, and they weren't making any noise. <laughs> now, folks, if we have a chance to meet later today after this program or at some point in the future, you've got to make noise. <laughs> if you don't make noise, I won't like you. <laughs> I may not like you anyway, but <clears throat> if you don't make noise, we don't have a chance. Well, I turned to Kathy, I said, look, I'm really nervous because we got to raise these people from the dead and we got potted palm trees and stuff, and I think there's somebody standing here. <laughs> she said, Jim, I don't know how to tell you this, but there's a guy standing next to you and he's holding up a note in front of your face for you to read. I said, look, I'm a little tense here. I don't need this, you know? <laughs> what does this note say? Well, she leans over and said, Jim, the note reads, I am deaf. Can you please help me locate the front desk? <laughs> so, so I turned to the deaf guy and said, no, sir, I'm blind. I can't help you find nothing. <laughs> so I turned back to Kathy. I said, what's he doing now? She said, he's holding the note closer. <laughs> so I explained it to him even louder. And folks, we never did get together on that thing. <laughs> 